you tell us about some of that? Um, well, the big one that we're working on right now is trying to teach open source uh, operating systems to the community. And uh, we're trying to bring things like uh, Debian and SUSE Linux out to people and teaching them how to use the interface and get used to just basic office skills, as well as uh, more complicated systems like the Linux Terminal Server Project, which uses thin clients or, as you can see, recycled hardware uh, to bring open source uh, technologies to people and uh, keep the cost down. Okay, I'm really motivated to do this because I get a personal kick out of working with technology. I really like uh, open source hardware and, uh, and software. I really just enjoy doing all the hands-on stuff and uh, playing with configuration files. I, I don't know how else to put it. That's really what I enjoy. So uh, open source really gives me a whole new venue for doing it because it's, it's free and it's widely available. All I need is an internet connection and I can get access to more documentation than I can read in 10 lifetimes. And it's, it's just such a wonderful community-based project. I mean, all of it is, is all about the community. It's all about the different developers that are getting involved with each other. Instead of trying to steal each other's business, we're trying to promote each other's business. And that's really just a great feeling to know that I have a, a huge group of people behind me. So can you tell us about your, your uh, skills with uh, Microsoft and your certification levels with Microsoft products? Yes, uh, my skills with Microsoft products are fairly extensive. I'm a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer for Windows 2000 and a Microsoft Certified Database Administrator for SQL Server 2000 Enterprise Edition. And that's the highest level of certification you can get. And it really just taught me that you don't really need to know all the basic aspects of the underlying technologies to be able to utilize uh, Windows software to set up a network. Um, you really don't need to know too much about it, just how to work the tools that Microsoft gives you. And that's okay, but when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, you're going to need a guru to come in and, and fix little problems here and there and do the last 20% of the configuration. And learning from the other side, the open source side, you have to learn the entire spectrum of all the skills that you need and really learn from a solid base before you can configure anything. So there are pluses and minuses. Um, the pluses are that, the pluses of, well, if you could tell us, what are the pluses for Windows? I mean, I, you know, the, the plus being that, well, it's easier, but you can only go so far. So, I mean, if you could compare and contrast that a little more. Where the advantage. So the question would be, what's the advantage of working with Microsoft as opposed to Linux and Linux as opposed to Microsoft from the perspective of being dependent on a, on a Linux guru? Okay. Uh, the advantages of going with the Microsoft infrastructure is the ease of administration that comes right out of the box. Um, you don't really need to know too much about the underlying services like uh, DHCP or, or file transfer protocols, things like that but you can get them up and running pretty quick just by clicking a few buttons. However, under Linux, there's a s slightly steeper learning curve. However, you learn a whole lot more about the protocols and you find that you can implement them in more situations and are more adaptable to different changes that, that might happen. So, um, how does that, where the rubber hits the road, how does that make a difference for an organization like this? Well, it, it might make an organizational difference in terms of cost of support because a Linux guru is going to be much more knowledgeable, probably already has Microsoft Windows experience, and is going to cost a lot more. However, he's going to be a true guru, and that's what you can be assured of is that he really knows what he's doing. A Microsoft person, there's a whole lot more of them, and they're going to be cheaper to hire, but they won't be able to solve a lot of the really tough issues. And uh, it's really going to, to be tough to solve certain problems. And at the end of the day, you might need to hire a Linux guru anyway. Yeah. All right, so I'll start with, uh, with the Microsoft stuff, because that's where I started, and then I'll work into the Linux stuff. There you go. OK. OK, go ahead. So I started my education at a technical school for Microsoft certifications and spent six months working 25 hours a week on Microsoft-based products. And that's what it took for me to get to my level of certification with Microsoft. However, with Linux, over the past year and a half, I've worked part-time and, and occasionally full-time uh, developing different skills with Linux based on the knowledge that I had from Microsoft. 
So it may not be a typical route to take, but I learned many of the same uh, techniques and protocols that Microsoft had are also implemented in Linux. So it was kind of a duplicated education in certain senses. And the fact that all the documentation for all the... So when you're thinking timeline or path, you mean like how I learned what to do first and then how I progressed throughout it because I didn't take a standard route. Do it personally? Yeah, with okay. what, what you did, how you did that. That's right. Yeah. All right, so I'll start with, uh, with the Microsoft stuff because that's where I started, and then I'll work into the Linux stuff. There you go. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So I started my education at a technical school for Microsoft certifications and spent six months working 25 hours a week on Microsoft-based products. And that's what it took for me to get to my level of certification with Microsoft. However, with Linux, over the past year and a half, I've worked part-time and, and occasionally full-time uh, developing different skills with Linux based on the knowledge that I had from Microsoft. So it may not be a typical route to take, but I learned many of the same uh, techniques and protocols that Microsoft had are also implemented in Linux. So it was kind of a duplicated education in certain senses. And the fact that all the documentation for all the protocols are freely available under Linux and there are how-to documents out there that some brilliant, brilliant gurus have written, then it really makes it easy for someone to just step right in and with a single internet connection can print off all the documentation that they're going to need and basically have uh, volumes upon volumes of previous knowledge to be able to install and configure their own Linux servers. Well, configuring my personal desktop was pretty easy. It took about half an hour, and uh, all I had to do was download a single CD off the Internet, and uh, the configuration worked for me. Uh, it's really something that just about anyone can do with the right amount of time.